Daniel Warren Hill is the lead singer and lead songwriter and vocalist for Yellow Tie Guy. Uh, the group has members from D.C., Maryland, and Virginia and released their second full-length album, Play on Words, this past November. Uh, Daniel also wears a number of other hats as well. He is the owner of community-based record label Alchemical Records. He manages an online magazine and an online radio station. He works with his father, Jim, to hand-build custom tube guitar amps at VVT Amplifiers. He hosts the weekly open mic night you heard about earlier at uh, every Tuesday at Villain and Saint in Bethesda, Maryland. And he is also a sound engineer and producer with over 17 years of personal experience in the industry. So I first saw Yellow Tie Guy and heard about him through the Capital City Showcase. And shout out to... Uh, to Christian Hunt in the mm -hmm. Capital City Showcase because he does some cool things. And so he's been an artist on there. And I saw this guy on stage with the Capital City Showcase and just cool sounds as you heard from that song. So listeners, it's with great pleasure that I introduce Daniel Hill. Thank you. It's always humbling when somebody talks about you. I don't know how you feel when somebody does it for you, but when somebody does it for me, I just want to crawl under a rock somewhere and, and then cover myself up with a blanket. Well, thank you for thank you for thank you for tolerating me there while I did that because I want to set the stage for them. So now, tell us how did you get started in this music thing? Where did that come from? Well, the long story short is going to be that I've been singing my whole life, and um, I've always had a passion for music and different instruments as I was growing up. Um, I got into music as an opportunity for, I guess you could say, a career choice, made a career choice when I found out I was going to be a dad. Um, and so she inspired me to, to pursue my dreams and set a, set a goal for her that whatever it is that she was interested in doing, you know, that she could also find a way to make that successful and happen for her. Wow. And what is her name? Her name is Madison. Wow. She's seven. Oh, Madison, if you hear this, shout out to you, Madison. And she runs the playlist in the car when we're driving. She begets to yeah. the songs. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. We're singing Ring of Fire together as a song we're learning to sing together. And also, if I had a million dollars, trying to get some you know, two-part things going on. So. <laughs> Very cool. This is what happens when you're, when you're a 70-year-old in a family with, with musicians. Right. I love it. That is cool. Well, so now... And this, so there's a lot of things going on. I listed a lot of things in that introduction. So why don't you just, where did Yellow Tie Guy from and the idea for the Yellow Tie? Talk about that a little bit. When I was uh, 11, I was visiting a camp, like a youth group yeah. uh, thing in North Carolina at a pretty big church down there. And they had brought up kind of some of the young preacher speaker boys to come up on stage and I was one of those guys that came up but the pastor couldn't remember my name when he invited me like up to actually come onto the stage so he goes you the guy with the yellow tie come on up here and I'm 11 years old and I go up and I do my thing and three years later I'm in Virginia visiting a church and they uh, they recognize me as the guy with the yellow tie and say oh you were the guy with the yellow tie down in North Carolina I was like how do you remember that I, I don't even remember what color tie I was wearing that day and so then I just it kind of stuck with me that this was something that was memorable and when I started playing solo shows it uh, when I started playing solo shows I, I oh, that's something from my school uh, too many smart objects <laughs> wrong button so wait a minute. So Yellow Tie Guy actually, co that is amazing. So somebody called you out as being the guy with the yellow tie and it stuck? It stuck. All those years later? I, I didn't make it up. Somebody else <laughs> made it up. And then I love it. When oh I was my playing, God. When I started playing solo acoustic shows as a teenager, it was just kind of a gimmick. Oh, I'll just be the Yellow Tie Guy. And then as, as you know, time went by, the band, when I started playing with a band and we were going to record a record, it was like, well do you want to be a different band name? Because I'm totally cool with it. I was just using Yellow Tie Guy, you know, for funsies and by myself, you know, but I don't assume that it represents a group of people per se. Yeah. They were like, no. And so I was like, okay, well, you're just telling me you're too lazy to come up with a unique band name, and so we're just going to run with this then, and, and that'll be fine. So I like to think of it as they love the idea so much that they wanted to do that one too. I don't know. I, I just guess. think everybody was skeptical about the project at first. <laughs> and so, you know, okay. now... 
It'll be like when 30 years from now, it'll be, you know, like Kid Rock. I wish we could have called ourselves something different. No. <laughs> oh, I hope that I yeah. hope that happens. Daniel, I hope we're, we're talking about this 30 years from now. And I can talk about the fact that you were on the show and I found out that you were a yellow tie to church and that's where the name came from. That's right. I, I really hope that that happens. It's that stuck. would be amazing. And now, so then you also Alchemical Records. What What is that? Talk about that. So when we put out our first record, Alchemical Records was already existing as kind of like an email chain where people would just kind of hit me up and I would, they would ask me for advice or ask me for a contact and I would go, well, I don't have the answer to this or I don't know how to do this for you, so let me forward you on to this person and maybe they can help you out. And it was just kind of a long chain mail, uh, email newsletter type situation, no, nothing official. And, and so when, when we put out the first record, we used Alchemical Records as a name to stick on the back of it. It was right at the height of DIY and, you know, do it all yourself. And I was like, well, I'll just put that out under my own label. All these other people are putting their music out on their own label, so I'll do it too. Yeah. And then once people had listened to it and, and, and had seen the album art and things like that, everybody was really impressed. And, and I started getting some interest in, well, how do I get on the label? What's, you know, what does the label do? And, and so it just kind of developed from there. It's still very community based in that everybody we talk to is somebody we just have a genuine relationship with at some point or run into and meet. And it continues to grow, but it's there's no specific set rate. It's really just about trying to help working with the artists ind individually. So the artists that are on the label, they get the help that I can best provide for them based on their needs. Yeah. So we mostly uh, try to focus on providing marketing and distribution. Anybody can distribute themselves, but marketing is something that you really have to to work through from start to finish and there has to be a long-term goal for artists and so artist development is really what we specialize in got it and when you say artist development does that mean helping them refine their sound or come up with finish an album or finish a piece of work or can I you say more on that I mean from a, 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 an engineering standpoint I might visit a show and then make recommendations to improve their stage sound from their perspective not necessarily from what an engineer does but then from a marketing perspective we might try to figure out how we can get how we can get them to supply me with tracks and artwork significantly before their set release date so that way we can try to get some buzz built out about it even if it's just from the underground or from those people that I can individually email or or share something with specifically and try to just grow it out that way um, so there's a lot of time it takes a long time to properly market and promote and I'm not saying we're always guilty of properly marketing or promoting anything but it is. It takes a long time and longer than people think. They go and they spend all this money or time recording a record, and then when it's time to release it, it's like tomorrow. Here you go, guys. We just finished it, and here you go. And there's not necessarily a lot of forethought to. Yeah, that you. I heard this stat the other day that you should spend as much time and money on the release on the PR for the release as you do on the on making the record. And that sure. was a that was an eye opening ratio for me because I thought it was more all about making the good music and then the if you build it they will come does not work with music releases you you really you have put, to tell getting people the word out there you got to tell people about one it. way or the other and now ten then vvt amplifiers is the other thing we talked about in the intro say talk about that well when i was a teenager and playing in a band with my brother um we we got a what was called a real amp a tube amp at the time and uh and so my dad had heard it and was like, I think I could build something like that or better. And so he took my mom's uh, cutting board and brownie pan and took it in the basement and and cut holes in it and bolted things together and put transformers and tubes in it and turned a... And you made a little five watt amplifier out of a cookie sheet and a... Uh, Stop it. Out yeah, of a cookie sheet? Out of, out of a cutting and board. A cutting and board? A, a cookie sheet and a cutting board. <laughs> Wow. No, it wasn't as good. That amp was not as good as the amp that we owned at the time. But, you know, things improved, and that's where the company developed. And so as I was continuing to just play music for funsies, my dad was building amplifiers. And and then as things got more serious for me, things were becoming more serious for him, and we started collaborating. And, and I do not have his engineering wisdom Um you know, I've got a lot of catching up to do, but I come from a business mind and a marketing mind and also just trying to build that one fan at a time approach. So, yeah. so I try to focus on web uh, development, business development, and just working with artists, working with our continuing to outreach and, and find more artists locally to work with and studios to work with. And why would they, there's a lot of amplifier companies out there. So what, what makes VVT special? Well, I truly believe that we don't build anything. We don't 
none of our models of amplifiers are things that we are regurgitating. So, it, you know, if you want a Marshall amplifier, you can call us and we could absolutely build you what would be a 1970 whatever vintage hand Marshall whatever. But, but those companies are already making great products that sound good, that a lot of people love. We're not here to, you know, poo poo on anybody's product. We're here to try to build something that's unique and original and, and really helps bring out the, the unique characteristic of the guitar player rather than to try to focus on what we sound like as an amplifier company. Each amplifier meets a different need for a different style of player. And you're talking to the two guys that build the amps in their garage, literally. And, right. and we are, we've uh, done our own R&D. We spend our money on R&D. We spend a lot of time before we release new products to work with artists to, to try to get it better. We've got a lot of talented players using our stuff. I think that the only... The only thing I hope for is that we'll have more diversity in our artists because I think that tube amps in general appeal to an older player. I also think that it appeals to sometimes certain styles of music. And so we'd like to we'd like to expand the artists that we're working with as far as genres, but I think as far as quality and, you know, that unique, hey, I, I got it. I can drive I can drive to the place where I'm gonna, you know, have my amp built right. or, or worked on. And meet the people, and that's right. So you can actually see it in production. You can see it in the DC area. If you make us, it. yeah, you can come watch us build you can, it. If you, you can make bring us. you, you can bring your own cutting board and right. then watch it become an amplifier. I got. <laughs> I, I am tempted. I am tempted to try to put together some workshops where I would teach people how to build a an amplifier like we did the first time, but I can't imagine what kind of legal concerns we might have to address or safety concerns, you know, for like... Probably, there's probably some, but that might be a little complicated, you're right. We, we're, we're afraid to tell uh, people how to do it right. <laughs> on their own. <laughs> I love that. All right, so, well, now tell us about you outside of, so we've got all these projects that you're working on, and then you as a guy outside of that, what do you do for fun? What's outside? Uh, aside from music, I, I really like to be outdoors. I like sunshine. I like hiking, camping. I'm actually a really country bumpkin guy. Get me away from the city is kind country of bumpkin country guy. bumpkin. Country yeah. bumpkin. Excellent. So that means what? I, the further away from the city I am, the more comfortable I feel in my in my element. Like I'm an earth tone. I wear earth tones. I, I just happen to be that reflection of my personality where I really do enjoy n nature and the atmosphere. I'm actually a bit. I am a recluse uh, okay. by nature, like because I'm so. I'm. I believe that uh, the work ethic that I have means that I have to kind of keep going, keep going, keep going, and I work and work and work from home until I pass out, or until I just can't stand Got it anymore. It. Uh -huh. And so, uh, so people have to put up with me from that end. Right. But, but personality-wise, uh, I like I like to go hiking and camping and skiing and paintballing and laser tagging. I try to stay active. Okay. Um, get get out and do fun things. That's and try right. Things and and away from the city when you can right the city is more the opportunity that i see to be able to share the music with more people in a condensed area or like we go to, we go to visit a lot of small cities and and try to you know perform to a specific audience that's very open-minded to what we're about to play and um but as far as like living conditions i i think i'm much more at home you know, getting eggs out of a chicken coop than i am wow like having uh having my butcher be my next door neighbor per se if that makes sense yeah, yeah absolutely well now what do you have in your music collection that might surprise us gosh well it might surprise people to learn that i mean the influences that i have aside from gospel growing up in church i, I mean I, I think that my music is influenced from everybody ranging from frank sinatra to metallica or you know heavier uh wow. living sacrifice or a band like that uh um, we had recently opened up for kind of a uh, a big um, a, like kind of Christian circle band called Project Eighty Six, and that's oh. that's a reflection of of stuff that we were into growing up and living sacrifice. And uh, um, there's another North, uh, the Pennsylvania metal band that was young that we were really into. I can't think of their name right nice. now. Nice. All right. So some of that stuff. And now, and what about so your earliest memory with music? Where does that go? I was I was on stage singing, I mean at four years old. I'm dressed up in you know suspenders and a bow tie, you know matching the person standing next to me kind of thing. So, okay. So that's probably what I remember is being young and in a in a barber shop quartet type situation at a at a young age and wishing wow. I'd stuck with that because barber shop quartet is still one of the coolest things ever. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree, man. It really, it's amazing what they're able to do with just four voices. So there's certain integrity, like a, a mm -hmm. pure authentic quality to having four people that have just found a way to be that cohesive. And it's really 
intimidating. Intimidating <laughs> <laughs> and really impressive. I love it. All right, so if there's one piece of advice that you could offer, what would it be? Uh, as far as a musician, maybe? Uh, or in general, however you choose to answer the question. I love to ask it open-ended. Relax. Relax. Take a deep breath. And just relax because we are so busy in this area I feel like my work ethic comes from living in the area where there's high expectations set to achieve or to accomplish things and it's great to be driven like that but at the same time there's so many people that are in such a hurry and and they don't realize that by whether it's by being you know an overly aggressive driver or by cutting somebody off for that job opportunity you know to try to get ahead a little faster than somebody else like it really is nonsense because we're all on the same similar path as one another and we're all headed to similar destinations and we all you know are just going to get there when we get there got it so relax relax take a deep breath all right chill out it's you're good you'll get there you will get there that's right i like it all things in good time and now, if people are really interested in learning more about you and Yellow Tie Guy, and where can they go online to find you? Well, there is a website that is yellowtieguy.com, or it used to be just .us, .us, but we got the .com from a life insurance agent that was formerly selling and, and sharing about himself under yellowtieguy.com. <laughs> another Yellow Tie there Guy? Another Dang yellow it. Tie guy. He the was, scandal. Right. Oh, okay. That's right. So we, we've... Uh, we managed to get that URL, and then we're also on pretty much any social media outlet that you can think of. I'm probably personally most active on Instagram because I take the picture and share it through Instagram, and it goes to these other outlets automatically. And so awesome. I, I'm actively seeing things that are going on in Instagram, and things like Facebook and Twitter are harder for me because there's so much information going on there at the same, like so much information for me to try to retain. Yeah, um, I get a little overwhelmed. <laughs> Got it. All right. So Instagram is a great. Instagram's place. great to okay. to stay in direct touch. Yep. Or or send me a message through the website. Absolutely. Yeah, and definitely check out the website. It's it's really cool what what you've been able to do, and especially all these projects too. Check out Alchemical Records, the cool things they got going on over there, and the radio station, Thank the you. streaming radio station. Just really cool stuff Dan's got going on. So definitely do check them out online.